Welcome to Electron Lime. Now we're going to try and tackle the concept of how big a photon is. And unfortunately, it's going to be very difficult, probably impossible, to come up with some means of describing the size of a photon. We can describe a photon in terms of how much energy it contains. We can describe a photon in terms of how long the wavelength is. We can describe a photon in terms of how we can deposit energy instantaneously onto an electron or onto an atom and distribute the energy that way. It can, it's the mediating particle between uh, electromagnetic forces or four electromagnetic forces. We can describe the photon in many, many ways, but when it comes to trying to find a definitive size of it, it's very difficult to do. So what we're going to do instead, instead of trying to talk about the the amplitude of the electromagnetic radiation waves in terms of the size of the photons, we're going to talk about it in terms of the size of the intensity of the electromagnetic radiation. And from that, I think we have a much better concept of what a photon is. For example, let's say we have a source of energy. It could be the sun, it could be a, 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 a speaker, it could be anything that produces electromagnetic radiation. Well, a speaker wouldn't do that, but I would say maybe a radio broadcasting station or anything like that. And so the radiation then goes outward, and of course as it spreads out, it diminishes in intensity because intensity is proportional to, oh, right here, uh, is, is inversely proportional to the area over which the radiation spreads, so it's inversely proportional to r squared, the distance away from the source. Also, what we can think about it is in terms of electromagnetic radiation is also a, has wave-like properties where the electric field oscillations vary with position and time, and the magnetic field oscillations vary with position and time, and we know that those two are perpendicular to one another, so as the, electro, the electric field oscillation changes in amplitude and direction like this, the magnetic field oscillations do the same in this direction, perpendicular to one another. Of course, when we think about sunlight or radiation, we expect to see a non-polarized system, in other words, we expect to see the vibrations in all different directions all 360 degrees. But let's keep it simple for now, and we'll talk about that one later. Also what we can see is that the pointing vector of radiation, which means it is a cross product of the electric field oscillations and magnetic field oscillations times a constant, which is 1 over 2 mu sub naught. Now the reason why that 2 is there, because we're taking the maximum value of the oscillations, the electric field and, and the magnetic field, if we take the RMS values, then we can get rid of the 2. So the intensity, which is equal to the absolute value of the pointing vector, is equal to this, and since the relationship between the electric field oscillations and magnetic field oscillations is the speed of light, we can replace the magnetic field oscillations by E divided by C, and so we have a C here, and we make that E squared, E, square, e maximum squared. So the intensity of electromagnetic radiation can be described like this, and therefore, if you want to find the maximum, and of course this is E max, the electric field uh, strength of electromagnetic radiation at any point in time, or at least, at least the maximum at any point in time, which would be the maximum oscillation right here, we can find that by taking the square root of 2 mu sub naught c times i. Let's do that for sunlight. What is it for sunlight? And that gives us an idea of how photons or how electromagnetic radiation actually works. So let's go ahead and put that in. Remember that mu sub naught is 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 Weber's per amp times meter. C is the speed of light. And I, in this case, for sunlight, I would be equal to 1,361 watts per square meter. So when we plug those numbers in there, this is equal to the square root of 2 mu sub naught, which is this number right here, times C, which is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And I would be 1,361 watts uh, per square meter. And we get an E max of, so we have 3 e to the 8 times 2 times uh, pi times 4 e to the 7 minus and times 1361. And then we take the square root of that. And we get, well, let me put on my glasses because I'm having trouble finding the decimal point, 1013. And of course, that would be volts per meter or newtons per coulomb. So, when sunlight reaches us, and of course we can understand that sunlight consists of a myriad of photons, when it reaches us, 
the electric field oscillations vary from zero to a maximum of 1,013 volts per meter. That means the potential difference over a distance of a meter is 1,013 volts. Okay, we'll get to that in just a moment. Now also we can describe the electric field oscillations as a wave function, a wave function that diminishes over distance. So the electric field oscillations will drop off as a function of distance, but since intensity is that wave function squared, then of course we can see that this would be E squared over R squared, and therefore we can see that the intensity drops off as 1 over R squared. The e equation is of course the electric field oscillation strength divided by the distance times the cosine of kr minus omega t, and that is a standard format of a wave equation. This determines the strength as a function of position, this determines the strength as a function of frequency. And of course remember that the speed of the wave is equal to omega over k, and of course omega over k can be written as 2 pi f over 2 pi over lambda, so you can see that c, the speed of light, is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. And so there's the equation for the oscillation of the electric field, if we square that, we know the intensity is proportional to that, and therefore we can see that it drops off as 1 over r squared. Now, here's the real key here. As sunlight moves through space at the speed of light, and it then encounters an electron. So let's draw that out. So let's say here we have the sunlight that is moving from left to right, and here is an electron. As the sunlight is moving past the electron, the electron will experience an electric field, but a changing electric field, an electric field that will change from zero to a positive 1,013 volts per meter, from zero to a negative 1,013 volts per meter, and back and forth. So when the electron experiences the positive volts per meter, of course, remember, if there's an electric field, and let's say the electric field is in the, at this moment directed like this. So there's the electric field, and of course that means that there's a seemingly positive charge on this side and negative charge on this side so at that very moment the electron will feel a force caused by the electric field being in that direction at that moment at a certain magnitude and the electron will, will feel a force in this direction but since the electric field oscillates at an enormous frequency of about 600 trillion times 600 yeah, a trillion times per second, then very, very soon after that, the electric field will be directed in the opposite direction as it's moving back and forth, but the electric field goes up and down like that. At that moment, the electron will feel a force in the opposite direction. And so you can see how the interaction happens between an electric field oscillation caused by, of course, um, electromagnetic radiation traveling past an electron, it will feel a force going up and down or left and right or at any particular angle depending upon the direction of the electric field oscillations. So that's how electrons feel the effect of electromagnetic radiation because of fast oscillating electric field. So we can't really talk about the amplitude of the waves. So when we take a look at E over R, that's not really the amplitude of the photon which would reveal something about the size, rather it's about the strength of the photon or the effect that it can have on charged particles by the amplitude of the electric field oscillations. So photons don't really have an amplitude like we typically see in a wave, like an ocean wave or a wave on a string, but it has an amplitude in terms of the strength of the signal. And that's then revealed in terms of the strength of the electric field oscillations as the electromagnetic radiation moves from left to right. And it's those strength of the, the, the varying strength of the electric, field, the electric field strength that causes the electrons or protons or any charged particle to feel the effect of that. The farther out you go, the, strong, the weaker the field will get because the bigger R, the smaller the ratio of E over R, then the strength of the electric field oscillation will diminish and therefore the effect on charged particles will diminish as you go farther out. So, can we talk about photons in terms of the size of the amplitude? No, we can't. But we can talk about photons in terms of the change in the electric field as the photons move along, and that strength of that change of the strength, the amplitude of the oscillation of the electric field, is really what we can talk about in terms of photons. So, hopefully that helps us understand photons just a little bit better. That's how we do that.